What's going on everyone? Welcome back. I've got the whiteboard out today. I'm going to talk about the difference between a network administrator and a systems administrator. Answering, uh, I think it was Tony who uh, had the question. He was a little uncertain. Let's get this party going here. So, let's start out with this side of the wall, okay? We're talking about a network administrator sometimes referred to as a network engineer possibly just depends on the company um, basically Tony was confused between a network admin and a systems admin because sometimes these these two roles are used interchangeably depending on the company and the truth is is that there is quite a bit of difference between the two um, and so that's Part of what uh, I'm going to do today is describe what the two of them do differently. Some similarities, not many. Um, this way we can kind of clear that up a little bit. Although companies really need to do a better job with defining what a systems administrator is and a network administrator because they do, they do different roles. Now, the one thing I did mention to Tony real briefly in a comment was that, you know, companies are downsizing and so a lot of times, especially in the IT departments, there are guys and gals working in there that wear many hats. And so sometimes you're gonna have people doing both jobs, right? And so, anyways, we'll get this party started we'll, with a network administrator. Um, but real quick, for those of you that may not know or understand what a network is when we talk about that, a network is nothing more than a group of, or an ecosystem made up of the entire uh, infrastructure, the IT infrastructure, okay? So down here I've got a, just a real cheesy diagram. So basically you've got you've got a data center or a server room or, or you know a room in a building that's housing all of the systems, okay? All of the hardware basically, right? And so it starts out with some kind of networking device like a router and switches and firewalls okay so you've got all these things that are kind of the center of the entire network and then you've got branched out okay so they're all interconnected so you've got branched out and you've got all the user computers and you got servers and whatever other devices that are on the network that comprise of the network that's that's really all that is okay and so what the network administrator does is he takes care of all of this, right? So they are responsible for installation, configuration, and setting up of networks, okay? And what that means is that a network um, admin is basically working with these types of devices, which would be routers, switches, firewalls, they'll get into some of the cabling, okay? Um, cabling could be the Cat5e and 6, fiber optics, kind of a mixture there, right, depending on the company. Um, for those of you that don't know, a, a router is basically the hub of the entire network. That's what splits off all the communication within a network, okay? So basically the internet runs off of millions of routers that are sitting across the globe, all interconnected somehow, and they are configurable. So you have to log into them and configure them so that, you know, you can set it up so that the, you know the network talks to each other. It's, it's a it's a big communication mosh, right? Then you've got switches, which are um, which are similar to a router, but they don't do they don't do all the capabilities of a router. I'm not going to get into the specifics of that, but they are configurable as well and part of the network. Then you got firewalls. There are hardware and software firewalls. So network administrators can, you know, they'll work with both. Um, and so that's what this is in, in here. And that's what they do. They basically configure all this stuff. Sometimes they'll work with phone systems when they, you know, as far as the cabling and VoIP. You know, if, if you've got the, the, the big newer phone systems out there that run on voice over IP, they'll deal with that as well. Um, but basically their job is to install, configure, set up, and then troubleshoot as needed. And, you know, they, they will work with these guys and gals as well when, when there's stuff going wrong in the network, okay? And I'll get into that in a minute. But basically that's what a network administrator does. They, they focus on these types of um, 
problems and, and areas within the network and and that's that's pretty much it right now I'm going to swap over and we'll get into what a systems administrator does now really the only there's only this is really the only similarity between the two or you know what what they do I guess we can kinda stick in these two as well but what a systems administrator does is they are responsible for taking care of all of the system servers that are in the network okay and so part of the network what makes everything run are the servers okay so you've got again going back to our data center where you've got the main hub where all the servers are located that run everything okay they run all the servers they run all the software and everything like that and so that's what the system systems administrator does they can also be called server administrators as well so there's a few different uh, names for these uh, folks right so again they are responsible for setting up installation configuring of server <coughs> excuse me server hardware and software okay so they are the company orders the servers they install the the operating system most likely it's going to be some kind of Windows server right Microsoft Windows server um, if it's not Windows server it'll be uh, some version of maybe Linux or Red Hat depending on the company um, and so that's what they do they they set up and configure those they troubleshoot them okay servers go go offline they they crash you know they they, they have problems just like any computer does um, but on a, on a higher level so their job is to maintain them troubleshoot them as necessary install software updates okay so if you've got a server that's running the the software the main software that the users are utilizing so let's take for example maybe a hospital okay a hospital might have a specific piece of software that they use on an everyday basis to run their to, to run their operations right well not only do you have the software running on these servers okay but you also have the people that actually support the software so like the application support folks and so the server administrator system administrator has, has to work with the different um, groups okay to do troubleshooting and things like that and so they'll, they'll be responsible for you know installing the newest updates for those software packages and all of that kind of good stuff they'll update the OS okay so like it, if they are running Windows software every month they're probably going to be installing Windows updates to keep everything fresh um, which that's a whole nother subject on its own uh, hardware upgrades and replacements so if, if a piece of uh, hardware goes bad inside the server and they have to change it out they'll, they'll do that as well and as, as, likewise they'll swap servers out you know when, it, when it's time to retire a box they'll bring in a new one and you know do all that migration stuff um, they'll monitor the servers okay they're responsible for these for these guys 24 7 they have to make sure those servers are running and there's many different applications there's third-party tools that could be used to monitor servers that uh, you know they, they send emails they'll send messages to pagers and cell phones or whatever it is you can get kind of fancy with that but they have to maintain and monitor these servers at all the time okay especially if we're talking about email servers one of the most vital production servers there are in any environment these days it's absolutely unbelievable how important email has become uh, and they serve as the escalation point for desktop and uh, and help desk okay so when the desktop folks are stumped or the help desk folks are stumped most likely they're going up to the uh, systems administrator to get help and so they, they they serve as that role as well they will work with vendors okay they'll work with vendors from you know when, when they're looking at a piece of software they want to buy or for support so if something happens with the server and they need help with with a piece of software that's running on it or even you know if it's a problem with the the operating system guess what they're calling Microsoft support okay 
and so they have to work with vendors and now that that's the same thing over here as well because again we're dealing with routers switches firewalls all kinds of hardware that's made by somebody right and so when things go wrong they have to deal with the vendors as well and so that is sort of a high level uh, overview of what the two positions do again like I said there are people that actually do all of this okay <laughs> and as you can see here it's it's a shit ton of work it's a lot of work for people um, you know most of the time you're on call and you know it's just depending on the environment too you know that, that there's very large environments and there's multiple system administrators and network ad ad admins and so I mean, there's there's just uh, there's a lot to be done to run a network and keep it up up to keep it up online. Um, you know, it's it's called uptime. You know, and downtime. You know, a lot of times they want to be up 99% of the time, and companies they they really really they keep an eye on that. So it's a big responsibility for people that are in these positions. Uh, very demanding, and so um, anyways, that is. A cap on that one. If you have any further questions on this topic, I'm more than happy to answer a little bit more detailed. Depending on the questions that come in, I you know I can create another video. Um, but I'm also going to talk about some other roles that are out there a little bit more specifically to kind of define it for for everybody here. I think that this kind of helps out when we lay it all out. And uh, anyways, I hope that helps everyone here. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions on this topic or any other topic. Thanks for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And last but not least, click the link in the description box. Get a copy of my resource guide. And uh, we'll talk to you on the next Q&A. See ya.